Hi, Indiana Athletic Directors. My name's Travis Doherty. Originally, I was scheduled to be with you today as the keynote speaker at your 2020 state conference, but of course, the coronavirus had other plans. Life for all of us has been put on hold, and with no school, no practices, and no events for the next few weeks, I hope you'll have a chance to rest up and recharge. But I also hope you'll have a chance to use this time to get better. I know the state conference is usually a time to learn and grow in this profession, and I was excited about being there with you. So instead of just calling it a wash, I thought I might provide you with a resource here that could do remotely what the conference might have provided for us collectively. I spent almost 20 years as a high school basketball coach here in Indiana. Since stepping away two years ago, I've spent more of my time writing, speaking, and sharing on the deeper purpose I believe sports can provide and the great opportunity people like us have to use the game to help our athletes become winners on the playing field and beyond. That's really the heart of the message I planned on sharing with you at the conference, that despite the challenges that come with being an athletic administrator, there's also a great opportunity for you to do some important meaningful work. This spring, I'm releasing a new online training program for coaches, parents, and athletes called Champions 101. I'm sharing with you today a preview of that online program. It's a lesson for coaches I think also applies directly to you as an athletic director called Achieve Your Goal by Fulfilling Your Purpose. If you're interested in learning more about how this online training could benefit the coaches, parents, and athletes at your school, my contact information is in the email you received here today. This video will only be available for the next couple weeks, so I hope you'll take advantage. I also hope when school gets back in session and life for you as an athletic director returns at least somewhat to normal, that you'll be rested and recharged. But I also hope you'll be better, more prepared and more equipped to fulfill the important purpose you have in the lives of those you lead. Stay safe stay healthy, and hopefully we can connect again soon. Hi, and welcome to this Champions 101 training session for coaches titled, Achieve Your Goal by Fulfilling Your Purpose. A goal is defined simply as an aim or a desired result. And regardless of where you're coaching today, winning is probably your goal. Winning is a great goal to have because winning is important. Sports, like life, is competitive. There are winners and there are losers. Plus, you'll be judged by your players, by your fans, and by your boss, at least partly by whether or not you win. So it's worth taking a minute to stop and consider today how you plan on achieving that goal. What's your strategy for winning? I believe the best way to achieve your goal in coaching is to focus on fulfilling your purpose. Your goal is important, of course, but your purpose is different. It's bigger and more significant. As a coach, winning is the goal, but developing winners is the purpose. That's the reason you're here. It's the meaningful, transformative work you have the opportunity to do in the lives of your players. It's teaching, preparing, and equipping them to be their best here, today, and into the future. It's using the game to make them champions for life. Of course, developing winners isn't easy. Developing anyone in any area can be slow, challenging, inconvenient work. And there are plenty of coaches who are pursuing their goal and maybe even attaining it without ever working to fulfill their purpose. That option's available to you too, of course. But today I'm hoping you can see that there's no more effective, more impactful, or more rewarding way to coach than committing each day to your purpose to helping your players become people worthy of winning in your program and beyond. In some ways, your goal and your purpose may seem like equivalent work. And sometimes, of course, they will align. But there are also a number of ways you can separate one from the other. Here's one way. While winning is focused mostly on an outcome, developing winners is all about the process. When you're driven only by winning, it's easy to make that outcome all that matters. 
This kind of focus makes it easy to feel like the score of a game or your season win-loss record is what really defines you. Of course, those things are important and worthy of your attention. But as a purpose-driven coach, that's not what's most important. You're committed to and defined by something bigger. Developing winners is focused on a process of growth and improvement. It's more like a daily commitment you've decided to make to helping your players become the best version of themselves. It's about recognizing the opportunities that exist each day to teach, train, and equip your kids, regardless of the outcome, and sometimes even in spite of it. In fact, some of the most important lessons you're responsible for teaching can only be taught when you and your players don't achieve the outcome you're after. It's your purpose that drives you to find those lessons and use them to make your players better, stronger, and more prepared to achieve their goal next time. The truth is, the most effective way to achieve a desired outcome is to focus on the process it takes to get there. When you're committed to finding the opportunities that exist today to use whatever happens to help your players learn, grow, and improve, both as athletes and as people, you give them the best chance to win tomorrow. Devote your time and attention to the process of developing winners, and the winning usually finds a way to take care of itself. Another way to separate your goal from your purpose is to recognize the difference between success and excellence and to consider which one you're promoting as a coach. When you're driven by the pursuit of success, you're focused on being the best or at least being better than someone else. Success always involves at least some element of comparison to someone else. It requires a scoreboard or a trophy or some other recognition that can only be given under the bright lights of the big stage. We need those things in order to validate us as a success. Again, I'm not trying to imply that none of these things matter. They do matter. But for the purpose-driven coach, they aren't all that matter. Purpose-driven coaches aren't focused on pursuing success. They're focused on chasing excellence. Excellence is different than success in that excellence isn't really about comparing yourself to anyone else. It's about becoming the best you can be. Success requires a scoreboard or a trophy or some other recognition that comes with that winning outcome, but excellence is all about that daily commitment you make to the process. Success is defined by what you do on game day, but excellence is defined by what you do here on this day. Success requires the bright lights and the big stage where everybody's watching. But excellence is really about what you do in the dark when no one's watching. As a purpose-driven coach, the scoreboard still matters, but it doesn't matter more than the standard of excellence you've set for your team. That means it's possible for your team to win a game and for you to recognize that your team didn't play like winners, that they didn't live up to your standard. You don't allow yourself to ignore your purpose just because you achieved your goal. At the same time, it's possible for your team to lose a game and for you to recognize that they competed like winners. This isn't always easy to do, but the more you commit to fulfilling your purpose, the less you're held hostage by any outcome, good or bad. So commit today, not just to helping your players achieve success, but to helping them chase excellence. As a coach, that means spending less time judging your players or comparing them to someone else and spending more time helping them learn and grow and develop. It means working relentlessly in the dark, even in those areas you know no one sees or appreciates. It means working to meet a higher standard in every area and helping your players do the same. A full commitment to running your own race as well as possible every day and regardless of what anyone else is doing that's the straightest path to excellence. Ironically, it's also the most effective way for you and your team to achieve success. Here's a third and final way to separate your goal from your purpose, by recognizing the different impact each one is capable of making. Achieving your goal creates a broad impact. The impact of winning reaches far and wide, and as always, when it comes to achieving your goal, that's a good thing. The more you win and the bigger you win, the more and more people you touch. 
That's part of what makes winning so attractive, the broad reach it creates. The problem is, despite that broad reach, winning's impact is really pretty shallow. People from all over may see you win, may hear about it, and may even really appreciate it. They just probably won't be changed by it. For all those who jump on your bandwagon when you succeed, many will be just as quick to jump back off when you don't. Even for you and the players who are inside your program, there will always be another game to play, another mountain to climb, another goal to achieve. People will celebrate your achievement, but its impact won't resonate. The process of developing winners, on the other hand, is different. One way it's different is that it won't have nearly as broad a reach. In fact, outside of your players, it's possible that very few people will ever know about, appreciate, or celebrate the commitment you've made to fulfilling your purpose. Winning will get the bright lights, big stage treatment, but developing winners usually happens in the dark. That's the bad news, I guess, that this important work won't get much fanfare. The good news is the impact of this purpose-driven work will reach deep into the lives of those you lead. The lessons you're teaching and the talent you're developing, the stuff that will help them become people worthy of winning in your program and beyond, that stuff won't fade easily. The more committed you are to this work, the more deeply entrenched this life change becomes in the lives of your players. You have the opportunity here to give your players something they can take and use long after their time with you is done. What your players learn and experience in your program can serve as the foundation on which they'll build the rest of their lives. The more intentional and committed you are to making it happen, the deeper and stronger that foundation you build. The question isn't whether or not you'll want your players to do big, meaningful things in life beyond your program. We all want that for our kids. The question is whether they'll have the foundation they need to do those big, meaningful things. Of course, other people will play an important part in that process, but you shouldn't underestimate the impact you'll have either. Here's another reason that foundation is so important, because there are some serious storms coming in the lives of your players. Storms we can't predict, but some we can help prepare them for. I'm sure you want each one of your players as they grow up leave your program and deal with the challenges of life to be as prepared as possible for whatever comes. You need to see that it won't be the shallow memory of a game won or lost long ago that'll hold them up in moments like that. It'll be that foundation that you hope to build, even years earlier, that might possibly help carry them through. The deeper and stronger the foundation, the more capable they'll be. I hope you can see clearly the difference that exists between achieving your goal and fulfilling your purpose, between winning and developing winners. I also hope you've been able to recognize that even though this purpose-driven work can be challenging, as a coach, it is the most effective, most impactful, and most meaningful work you can do. It's the best way to win, and I believe it's work you won't regret. So now let's take the next step Instead of just accepting that this is important work, let's talk about how exactly we take these concepts and put them into practice. Here are some specific action steps you can take, starting today, to help you fulfill your purpose, to use the game, and to develop winners for life. The first way you can fulfill your purpose is by making your players' mental and emotional development a priority in your program. Of course, in order to achieve your goal, your players need to develop their physical ability. They need to get stronger, faster, and more athletic. They also need to build their sport-specific skill. You're the one, as the coach, who's responsible for making sure that happens. But fulfilling your purpose requires you to do more to go beyond just training their body and commit to developing their brain and their heart too. Champions in any sport and anywhere in life really have more than just elite physical ability. They are unique and set apart in many ways, including, and maybe most importantly, who they are on the inside. I wrote a book about what I call the hidden talent of a champion, the awesome stuff winners do that really makes them who they are. Champions love the game. They give their best. They overcome adversity and they seek improvement. 
Champions get coached and are great teammates. They take risks and they choose a positive attitude. Champions do all those things and it's part of your purpose as a coach to help your players learn how to do all those things too. They're hidden partly because they don't always get the attention and acknowledgement they deserve. That's part of fulfilling your purpose as a coach to make sure they do. I'd encourage you to utilize some of the resources here in the Champions 101 training system to help your athletes cultivate their hidden talent. It's important too not to forget the reality of the learning and improvement process for any of us, your players included, in these or any other areas of life. Your player's hidden talent can be developed, but it'll take more than a single conversation, a single page in your team handbook, or a single poster on the wall. It'll take time and energy and attention from you. You'll need to be disciplined and intentional in order to recognize the opportunities you have each day to teach, train, and equip your kids. You have to make some hard choices about how you spend the time you have with your players. We all feel the constant pressure to spend more time on skills and drills, more time on X's and O's than we do on our players' mental development. But remember, it doesn't matter how good your drills are or how well designed your plays are if the people behind those X's and O's aren't equipped to play the game like winners. Another way you put your purpose into action is by creating a culture where that mental and emotional development we talked about is a priority every day. Fight to build and maintain this environment, not just because you wanna win, but because you recognize and embrace the process required to develop winners. Make your program a place where your players are being taught and being encouraged and being challenged to behave like champions every day and in every way. In a strong culture, developing winners is not a thing you do, it's everything you do. It's an environment of nonstop opportunity for your players to work on doing what champions do. For players who are early in this process of development, that probably means just working to make individual winning choices each day. Players who are farther along are working to take those individual choices and start stringing them together to build some winning habits. And players who are more advanced, who built great habits already, they're working each day to validate their winning identity. In a purpose-driven culture, there are opportunities every day for your players to build and strengthen their effort, their toughness, their attitude, and their discipline. There are unique and engaging ways for them to cultivate courage and teach togetherness. And there's accountability to a high standard of champion-minded behavior. Not so your players can suffer for falling short of the mark, but instead so you can continually clarify who it is your players are capable of becoming here in your program and in any area of life beyond it. Of course, creating and maintaining a strong culture isn't easy. Some kids, probably those who've been taught and trained well in these important areas before entering your program, those players will thrive. But the players who aren't winners yet, those who've never been held accountable to a higher standard and who might even seem resistant to your purpose-driven work, those guys will struggle. You've got to be able to handle that. Persevering in spite of that struggle, trusting the process that growth and development requires, and sticking with those kids while they learn isn't easy, but it is one of your most important commitments. It's important for everyone involved with your team, the players, the coaches, the parents even, to understand that your purpose-driven program is, is not one where people are expected to be perfect, but it is one where people are expected to be progressing. And believe it or not, the fact that players in your program with a mediocre mindset are struggling is a good thing. It's a sign that you've built a strong culture. You want those kids who aren't there yet, who don't play hard, who aren't tough enough, who struggle with attitude or fall short in some other area. You want those kids to feel uncomfortable, that there's pressure and encouragement and opportunity for them to change. After all, someone in your program is gonna feel like an outsider. If it's the high achievers who feel that way, then that means you don't have a high standard or a strong culture. If that's the case, both your goal and your purpose will suffer. That's why you've gotta be willing to fight that fight for your culture every day. 
because you know your players need it. A third way you can put your purpose into action is by continuously connecting the dots for your players. You're the one who's responsible for tying the experiences your players have, the lessons they learn, and the identity they create in your program to the lives they're living now and the lives they'll be living someday soon beyond the game. Of course, right now your job is to help them become people worthy of winning as athletes, as students, and as citizens. Soon though, they'll need to be worthy of winning in some bigger, more important areas of life. There the stakes will be higher and their character will be tested. They probably don't recognize that many of the qualities they're working to develop as athletes can impact who they are and help them win in life beyond the game, both now and in the future. That's why you're here. You need to recognize it and help them recognize it too. This is one of the most important reasons for fulfilling your purpose, because the choices you help to encourage, the habits you help to build, and the identity you help to create in your players today will influence who they are forever. Experiencing and cultivating the ability to keep their commitment, to give their best, to overcome adversity and to seek improvement are all important to winning games in your program today. So is getting coached and being a teammate and taking risks and choosing a positive attitude. But hopefully you can attest from experience that each of these unique abilities is directly connected to winning in every area of life even those areas that will be important to your players long after their time with you is done. At home, at work, in a marriage, or as a parent, this hidden talent separates the champions from everyone else everywhere in life. You're the one who's responsible for making sure your players understand its place in their life. So I challenge you to look for more and more ways to connect what your players are working on in your program to the life they're living beyond it. That can, of course, be some big, planned, organized part of practice, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe it's a conversation to close the day that ties an experience from this day into a more practical lesson about life. Maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one discussion you have with a player who's somewhere in that process of development. It could be a conversation meant to inspire someone who's, who's struggling or fuel the fire of someone who's committed to doing this important development work. Today's player isn't as receptive to the do it because I told you so mindset that so many of us grew up with. Today's player is willing to buy in, but they usually want to know why they're doing what they're doing. What they're really after, to be honest, is the same thing you're after, to have and fulfill a meaningful purpose for being here. When you connect the dots for your players, you help them connect to an important understanding about their experience as an athlete that if they use it the right way, it can help them become people worthy of winning here today and forever. Hopefully for you and for them, that's an exciting proposition. As coaches, I believe it's worthwhile for us to stop occasionally and consider what exactly it is we want our legacy to be when our careers in this profession are complete. When we do that, when we determine who it is we wanna be at the end of our coaching journey, it changes our focus for today. When we consider what we want to have accomplished, what impact we want to have made, and what we want those associated with our program to say about us when our career is done, it helps clarify for each of us who it is we need to be today and what we need to value and prioritize. As a coach, your legacy will be determined at least partly by how often and how well you achieve your goal. You'll remember the big wins and the tough losses, and others will too. But your legacy will also be determined, and more importantly, might I add, by whether or not you fulfilled your purpose. You have an incredible opportunity as a coach to have an incredible influence in the lives of your players, but only if you take advantage of it. As we said back in the introduction, there are plenty of coaches who are pursuing their goal, and maybe even attaining it, without ever working to fulfill their purpose. That option's available to you too, of course. But I'm hoping you can see here today that you don't have to choose one or the other. If you're intentional and committed, it's entirely possible to do both. Let me say too, before we wrap up, that it's hard to develop something in your players that you haven't first developed in yourself. 
Just as each of the hidden talent areas are critical to your player's success in sports and in life, each one is critical to your success in coaching and anywhere else you're hoping to win. The truth is, if you want your players to become their very best, then you've got to continue to work to become your best too. I'd encourage you to go to the training center and check out the coach's course titled Champions Breed Champions to learn how you can more effectively do what champions do in your own life and thus more effectively help your players do it in theirs. I know that no matter where or who you coach, there will always be pressure to devote more and more of your time, your energy, and your attention to winning. But remember, the best way to achieve a desired outcome is to focus on the process it takes to get there. The best way to find success is to focus on chasing excellence. The most effective, most impactful, and most rewarding way to win is to focus on developing the players in your program into people who are worthy of winning on the playing field and beyond. It's not quick, easy, or convenient work, but as a coach, it is the most important work you can do. And it's work I can promise you won't regret.